Hello everyone, welcome to Keeney and welcome to this my first collection update video of 2022 and we're going to start off with three albums from Bob Dylan, the first of which I've shown twice already. And yes, there is a lot of numbers to start any video, I do apologise, but uh, the record in question is this, it's Blonde on Blonde and if I sort of sit like this I almost look like a, a two-headed monster with, with Bob here, but uh, yeah this is an album that definitely deserves to sit amongst the best of the double album, you know, it's double album royalty we have right here and, and uh, yeah, I've really, really grown to like this album. I've decided to keep the shrink wrap on my copy, uh, so unfortunately we can't see inside the gatefold really I suppose, which is a bit of a shame because I'm aware there's two different versions or, well different versions anyway this album, depending on which press you have or variant or country of manufacture and that kind of thing. But, We'll never know. I guess it will remain a mystery what, what I've got with mine. But uh, there is a little quirk that I want to just quickly go over with with, with my copy of this, and there does seem to be quirks with all these uh, D'Angostini sort of series, you know, in, in general. Really, they just seem to go in and out of of having these little strange things about them. But uh, record one has side one, side two to it, which is fair enough, of course. But then. Uh, record two has side one and two again, so there's no three and four. Never seen that before on a on a on a double album. It's just the labels as well, by the way. It's not the actual record. It doesn't repeat the music on 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 the side. So yeah, a bit of a, a bit of an oddity to say the least. Now, uh, one thing I would like to mention about uh, Blonde on Blonde is a track called Sad Eyed Lady of the Lowlands, which uh, the first time I heard it, really, it's sort of stuck out as something that reminded me of another song that I've, uh, I sort of had in the back of my head. I couldn't quite place her at first and then the penny dropped and, and the track that it reminded me of is uh, a track found on, on a, a Beatles album, the White Album. It's a George Harrison song called Long 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 and yeah it was sort of strange you know the way it sort of made me Feel you know, remind me of that song. I'm not saying they're both the same, but they have sort of similarities. You know, check them out if you if you if you're not too sure what I'm talking about here. But yeah, check them out. I've noticed that there is sort of some similarities between the two. I was talking to this uh, to somebody at work recently, and uh, we started to discuss the uh, the the sort of uh, the way that Beatles and uh, Bob Dylan sort of influenced each other. You know, around the mid 1960s. You know, you know, you listen to, to Bob Dylan's music, it almost became more Beatley after that, you know, it definitely became more Beatley sounded, and uh, the Beatles music themselves went more Dylan-esque to a certain degree, you know, you think of something like the Help album, you know, it's quite a folky album, so yeah, it's kind of a curiosity, I wonder if uh, Side-Eyed Lady of the Lowlands is another instance of, well, maybe not Bob Dylan becoming influenced by the Beatles, it's more like the Beatles being influenced by, by Dylan, because of course, you know, Long, long, long came out after a sad eyed lady. So yeah, little little curiosity there that I've noticed with with the music anyway. So I'll take a look at the little magazine that comes with it, and it's got a nice image of Bob there that would have made a really really nice full sort of size poster, but it wasn't to be. And I think inside here you actually get the photographs that were included in, you know, in the gatefold. So, so at least we can kind of maybe see inside the gatefold without taking the shrink off in this instance. But anyway, so that's uh, that was issue number seven. Issue number eight of this collection is uh, John Wesley Harding, and uh, this is an album from 1967, the Psyche era. And you know, Bob Dylan's gone the opposite direction here with this album. You know, with this black and white image and he's gone you know, in terms of the music this is more of a, a country album definitely than a, than a psych album so yeah uh, quite a brave album for the time you know he's definitely not running with the pack and this is the album really where I suppose he sort of ditches the, the more rocky sound of uh, you know the earlier you know the, the few albums prior to this you know and you know maybe ditching the, the, the Beatles influence that he had you know the Beatles influences maybe started to fade at this point well anyway it's, it's kind of a, a change of pace i suppose and it, it paid off critically this album was successful and commercially it was successful as well so it just goes to show that running with the pack isn't always the right thing to do 
And yeah, I've had this album very long, just over a week. I need to listen to it more, but the, the quality on it's fantastic. There's some great stuff on here. And this is the, the magazine thing that comes with it. And not a huge amount to show, unfortunately, with these, but I'll show it anyway rather than just skip over it. And that's, that's kind of it, really. So fair minimal amount of information once again. So we'll move on to the final Bob Dylan album we'll be showing in this video. It's Nashville Skyline. And, you know, we've got the Beatles influence again, I suppose, or or uh, you know, making a sort of appearance with this album. In terms of George Harrison's guitar, I believe that was George's guitar that he gifted to, uh, to Bob there. Um, yeah, again, completely non-psych album you know, for 1969. And, you know, he's, he's gone full country with it with this one. I've only had this album a, a few days, actually, so I've only listened to it about twice. So I need uh, more time with it, but I can't help but be taken by its charm, really. It's nice to get something that's a bit country as well. I don't really have a whole heap of uh, country music. Um, it's nice to, to kind of get something that diversifies the uh, the collection to some degree, I suppose. And this is the magazine that comes with it. And one thing you notice about these, these uh, issues now, take a look at the image on the cover. You get there again inside, and then when you open it up, you kind of get it again as well, you know, just to make sure. So, so that's that. So, and then one thing I would like to point out with these on the back there, it's got up and coming issues that, you know, due to come out, issue 10 is New Morning, and issue 11 is Self Portrait. And I was doing a bit of research on uh, Self Portrait because it is a double, and I am somewhat obsessed with double albums and uh, it is the first Dylan album really to come out that was not uh, well received by both you know uh, the record buyers and the critics and everything so you, I, I am kind of a bit of a crossroads at this point in time you know do I continue on into the 70s with Dylan's back catalogue or do I do I stop at this point and just maybe cherry pick the records I want the most I have heard very very good things about uh, Blood on the Tracks, which is due out soon, I guess. And uh, that's an album I probably will check out sooner rather than later. The things as well I would like to mention about, you know, quickly about Self Portrait is that, yeah, it was not critically well received at all when it came out. One of the people, this is from Wikipedia where I get most of my facts, by the way, I was reading there, uh, Mark Boland of all people, you know, of T Rex, he actually came forward and uh, defended the album, he said it was great and everything, you know, he really enjoyed it. So I'm curious to just check this album out now, just to see if I like the album as much as uh, Bowen did back in 1970. But when we move on from Dylan, onto something very different musically indeed, it's it's uh, Alice Cooper, I got this DVD around Christmas time, it's uh, Brutality Live, this is a live gig he did from, uh, I'm just reading this from the back, the Apollo Hammersmith in, in London, 19th of July, year 2000. Fantastic live gig. Uh, I highly recommend checking, you know, uh, Cooper out if you've never seen him before, even if it's just on YouTube or whatever. He is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the all-time greatest entertainers. You know, his show's fantastic, you know, big rock show with horror and comedy and all that. It's just so over the top and so fun and so well put together and well thought out and well performed. You know, he's got great musicians. It really is a fantastic show. And he is going to be touring this year in the UK, and I am very tempted to kind of go and see him again. And the energy of this guy is kind of immense, you know, he's, he's kind of incredible. It's uh, Lola versus the Power Man, uh, Power Man and uh, the Money, Gra Money Go Round Part 1. Even when I read it, I was like, got it wrong. So, yeah, this is an album that I've, I've come close to picking up a few times. An original copy it just never really happened it's not an impossible album to find an original copy of you know in the uk but it, it's it's a tricky one and you probably will pay a pretty penny for the privilege if you do get your hands on it yeah, but this is uh, the 50th anniversary reissue of the 1970 classic album and uh, i found this in hmv it was on offer i just couldn't really resist it in all honesty and i, I do like this format as well of, of it being like a book and uh, 
the book is actually very informative. It talks about the problems that the kings were going through at this time. You know, financially, apparently they were getting by just through their gigs that they were doing. You know, money from the records just wasn't coming in. And it, this is a very bitter album against the record industry and the treatment that we're having from record executives and that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's quite an interesting read, really. And apparently this album, when it came out, it was uh, it had two two hit singles. But the album itself was a bit of a flop in the UK, anyway, and uh, it's it's like that just never really happens, you know. Usually, if you get hit singles, the album itself is going to be a hit, but it really wasn't the case. So uh, it was a real struggle for them. It's kind of amazing they stayed together throughout it all, really. And they were really struggling, you know, even to put food on the table and that kind of thing. So yeah, it, I actually think a, a film or a TV series on on the kinks and you know just at this point in time would have been you know a pretty interesting idea you know to go through the history of the kinks you know i think it's something that's that's quite dramatic you know there's there's, there's definitely some uh, drama going on with, with with the story of the kinks you know if you look into it so yeah i wonder if that will ever come about like we got one for queen i actually think probably a more interesting story in all honesty than, than the queen story you know in terms of things going on and you know, the things that you know happen to them and, and everything you know them getting their you know a touring ban and all that sort of thing so yeah there was a lot kind of going on with, with the kink so what this actually has on it is uh disc one has the album of course which has been remastered 2022 remaster which is great great sounding remaster i've never heard the original but i imagine this if anything is probably better than the original cut uh, you also get on the same disc you get the, the mono mixes the single mono mixes Lola and Ape Man and Rats and all that. And then on disc two, you get an alternate version of the album. So you get like uh, alternate mixes, you get demos, you get live performances. So yeah, a nice, a nice, a very nice release. Well worth looking into, if you do, particularly if you don't own a copy of this album. And there is a three disc version of this as well, if you want to push the boat out maybe. Well, quite honestly, how many you know how many different versions of Ape Man do you really need? This 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 one actually has more than enough. I think there's like three three versions, four versions maybe of Ape Man. You know, it's more than enough in all honesty. So, so that's that. What lo lovely album, a bit of an unfocused album. You when you listen, just focus on the album itself. It's kind of a bit all over the place, but uh, it's still got some really really good stuff on it. And I really do love the Kinks. So we'll move on to the the final item I'm going to be showing you and last but not least is a book from none other than James Griffiths you know here on YouTube and this is Squeeze uh, the pop music played the story of Squeeze 1978 to 1982 and uh, yeah there's James there on the back and yeah I, I picked this up uh, around Christmas time you know right it took a little while to, to, to get here because of Christmas you know interrupting postage and things like that but, you know, it got here in the end. And uh, I haven't read any of it at this point. So I want to make that clear. And this, there's definitely not going to be a review. And uh, maybe I'll make a follow-up where I do, do get around to reading it. I, I'm currently reading another book at this point in time. I never start a book, a new book, until I've read the, the old one. Unless I'm not enjoying it, of course, which is not the case at this point. I'm really enjoying the book and reading. So maybe I'll, I'll give this a, a go uh, soon. Sooner rather than later, I suppose. This will be next on my... On my uh, reading list i suppose i've got a bit of a backlog of books that i always have but yeah congratulations james on getting this put together it's pretty pretty amazing you know to, to get any book made is is an achievement within itself you know it's uh it's never easy you know to get to to dedicate yourself as much as you need to, to get a book written and then to get it out there you know it's always a, a great accomplishment so congratulations james and everybody else who who uh, helped make it possible of course so yeah i'm looking forward to read that i'm not a, a huge uh, squeeze fan out there i don't like them or anything like that it's just not not one band that i've uh, i've really ever i don't own any of their music or anything like that maybe this will convert me into a bit of a fan but that was one of the reasons really besides of course it's a, it's a book by james but uh, it's uh it, it it's it's a book that you know, it, it's not a it's not a Beatles book, effectively. You know, I'm kind of I've kind of read so many books on the Beatles. You know, if I have to read, uh, you know, you know anything about uh, John Lennon growing up with his Aunt Mimi again, I'm kind of going to go a bit mad. So to read something about 
a group that I don't really know anything about or very little about. I know certain songs and that kind of thing, and I know the significance and everything, but to, to read something that I, I know very little about will be a bit refreshing for me. It'll be a, a real insight, you know, and that kind of thing. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I enjoy it. It kind of converts me into being a bit of a, a, a squeeze fan. So we'll kind of end the video on that. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone.